I'm going to say something that will surprise many people, I'm sure, Kubrick enthusiasts anyway. Stanley really was the easiest person I ever worked with in my entire working life. He also treated me with the most respect, actually. And he was like that with the whole crew. They were hand-picked. He treated everybody as equals. And he was very, very uncomplicated the way he was. Straightforward, matter-of-fact. When it came to the editing, he was very clinical. In the editing, he was the editor. And he marked every single cut. And you were simply cutting and splicing the film to his instructions. But when it came to the music, he was like a different person. It was extraordinary. He seemed to trust me completely. He had great faith in me for some reason. I was very flattered to be asked to do it. And he first he said, I want you to listen to the whole of Penderecki and pick pieces that you think will have potential for the movie and show me and play me a shortlist, which I did. And he was very positive and he got, got it down to a shortlist of pieces he liked. And then he told me every music cue in the movie um, he didn't suggest what music to use ever, he left it to me, but he did say that with each cue he wanted a choice of two or three pieces of music, which I did. And I'm happy to say that most times he picked the piece I hoped he would. Now there was one scene where I couldn't give him any choice, because there was only one piece of music that worked, and it worked brilliantly and nothing else worked at all. And that was Midnight, the Stars and You, when Jack walks into the gold ballroom. It was just amazing, because I got it, so that it looked as if Jack is actually waltzing to the music in sync, as if it, the music was being played when it was being shot, and it wasn't, it was mute. This is many months later. And so that was a bit of a gamble, because I haven't given him any choice. And it's as if I'm going to Stanley and saying, you must use this piece of music. Fortunately, he loved it. And then as I got to the last reel, the last two reels, the mosaic of sound gets really interesting. He wanted me to do that and build up this sound. Um, and there were some really exciting moments. And there was one which I remember so well. Uh, when I did it, and that's when Jack is chasing Danny in the maze, and Danny hides, and Jack stops and shouts, Danny! And Pendereski goes, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and I remember I nearly blew my mind when I did that, and I thought, gosh, I hope I haven't gone over the top. And Stanley loved that as well. And then at the end of that last reel, there's this lovely ritual with each reel when you're dubbing, a thousand foot reel, um, where the whole dubbing crew and the editors sit back and watch the finished thing because the music's the last thing to be done. And so for the first time, you are seeing that part of the movie in all its glory with the colour cutting copies put up and, and the music. And, and there was a really good vibe with that last reel of The Shining. And then the lights came up and Stanley turned to Bill Rowe and he said, yeah, that's good. And then he stood up and he came walking up the aisle. It's like a miniature cinema, the Dunning Theatre. And I realised he's walking straight towards me, which is quite surprising. The first thing he does at the end of the dubbing. And then he leant forward and said, everyone could hear what he said. Gordon, I just wanted to tell you that it was beautifully done. And that really was my proudest moment in the whole of the film industry.